everyone, welcome to my channel. I am very excited to bring a time-lapse tutorial for you today. It's been far too long since I've done one, but I finally got a full painting done and was able to make a time-lapse video from it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to have some commentary here and there throughout to just kind of talk about my process and what I do. So I hope you enjoy. So for all of my paintings, I begin with a very light pencil sketch, except for my 10 minute paintings, which are just really quick and meant to be a fast exercise. I tend to not put an outline down. I just dive in. But with these where I really want the proportions to be accurate, I definitely am very methodical with creating an outline drawing to try and be as accurate to the reference image as possible. And the reference image, like most of my videos are, or most of my paintings, uh, the reference images from unsplash.com. They have copyright free content, uh, but I have linked the image in the description because I do want to give credit to the artist for taking such a lovely photo to work from. So I am using my size three round tip brush. For the longest time, my size four round tip brush was the best, but it has started to fray a little bit at the ends, even with trying to take as good best care of it as possible. It's really dry in Colorado, so that's certainly a factor. Uh, so I have had to start using the si a new size three round tip brush. And for later on that blue handled one, uh, that's actually a size one round tip brush because super fine details. And you're seeing my <laughs> face and hair kind of in the bottom left corner a few times here. I just had to get close enough to be able to see what was going on. So forgive the, the face emerging into the frame, but I think you can still overall see what's going on. So I am laying down the color actually uh, to begin pretty thick, maybe a little thicker than I typically do. I just knew for this with how bright and vibrant the cardinal was, I wanted to actually even start out with fairly rich color and then keep building it up because it is so deep red. So I didn't want to start super, super light. Now in areas on the beak where there were highlights and that kind of thing was needed, yes, I did start fairly light, but you can tell already just in these first few sets, I'm laying it uh, the color in really quite thick. And the way I, I did pre-mix some reds, I uh, cadmium red light and cadmium red medium together, as well as a tiny bit of alizarin crimson. And quite a bit of these, I'm also adding in some, I always get these mixed up, my browns. I think it's some burnt umber. It's just kind of a middle ground brown, not with, with not a lot of oranges. So just going in and kind of laying in some of the, blocking in some of those other areas, I really took quite a long time on the face to begin, I would say like an hour and a half total really on that kind of main black beak and slight red areas around the face. And then really just kept going with it much quicker on the rest of the body, at least to block in the areas and then later on slowing down a little bit to add more details. And again, the, oh, there's my flat brush. So I do use a flat brush a little bit in here. That helped sometimes when I needed to lift color off because as I said, I was working pretty dark and a couple of times I realized, well, I'm, maybe I went a little too dark. So <laughs> I lifted some of the paint out with that uh, flat brush. And the flat brush was also good for later on laying in uh, wider fields of color like I'm doing right here. The wings were a little more of a challenging spot because you have some of those individual feathers that are showing in the image of the cardinal. And so trying to be intentional and purposeful with showing each feather, the shadows in between, so you can see the feathers overlapping. So that did take quite some time. And again, I'm using for those sections mostly that size three round tip brush. And when it really needing those finer details, like the shadows in between the feathers, I think I did wind up using the size one, very thin, fine round tip brush that comes to a beautiful point. Mm -hmm. 
for the most part, the shadows, I'm either using, like I said earlier, that burnt umber, that kind of nice brown, as well as Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is my favorite for shadows, especially when you're overlaying the t over the top of red. It almost gives it a, like a purpley kind of hue. It just adds a lot of richness. That flat brush is actually kind of decent because when you turn it on the side, it creates a, a, almost a fine line. So that was kind of nice for creating a little bit of the feather texture. But of course, with those fine tip brushes, I was actually going in and kind of drawing individual sort of lines to get the textured feather look. They're starting to fill in the fence. I use that Payne's gray. There's a little bit of brown at the top. And something that is so crucial for watercolors and trying to get realistic is really building up the color to as rich of a hue as you can. So really the more paint and <clears throat> kind of not a ton of water, but kind of middle grade amount of water. Sorry, my, my words are escaping me right now. But uh, if you have thicker paint on, you can get a much richer color. But it's even sometimes the first time you lay it down, even if you're trying to go dark, watercolor, that is what watercolor is all about. It's a very light, potentially a very light medium. That's why you see a lot of pastel colors and flowing uh, fields and shades. So if you really want to get the super rich color, you're going to have to keep layering. And don't be afraid to add other mediums in. I missed it, but you'll see there was some colored pencil I used there. And also right now to add in some of those lighter feathers that were overlaid over the top of the really dark feathers, I went in with some white ink as well as some white... Uh, Yep, the word's going to escape me. I'll think of it. It's another kind of paint. But anyway, so I had white permanent ink that I was going over in the top, colored pencil as well. And now here comes one of the fun parts is just adding in the splashes of color. And I had I had, had a little kind of, I decided I didn't like the way it was with those, like kind of blowing on it to create those splatters. So, so I kind of changed that a little bit. But there, again, you see the white ink and I'll list what kind it is in the description to add the little sort of bits of snow uh, that the, the bird had. And again, putting in some of those highlighted feathers again. And this always happens, I add a signature and think I'm done and then I'll walk away and then come back and realize, ooh, there's like some more I need to do. So I realized that value of that dark wing wasn't really dark enough compared to the image. So I went back, I'm also adding in some colored pencil detail and then back over the colored pencil with some darker washes of color to really get the level of value that was needed in that kind of left side of the body right next to the wing. And then a few more highlights to bump up the color with that sort of orangey red peel the tape off, erase the pencil outline I had for guiding my tape, and then there is the final product. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would really be grateful. And until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, God bless, and I'll see you soon.